experience design to me is taking responsibility for someone else's happiness. Victor will always believe something is possible and will always fight for those possibilities. He knows what he wants and he's direct about it, but that's what I like about it. Dreams very big, sometimes a little bit too big. You can tell he loves what he does. What's not to love about him? So we call ourselves mystery experience makers because mystery is something that tickles your, your curiosity. And we love working with that power of showing something a little bit, teasing and inviting people to come into this world and tumble down the rabbit hole. And there's an element of mystery in everything we design. And so we said, well, that's what we do. We're mystery experience makers. So I'm Victor. I am one of the founders of Sherlock. So we create mystery experiences. And also I created or co-founded a store called The Maker Store, which is a platform for Amsterdam-based makers. And uh, before that, I was a filmmaker and I still love film a lot, and both as a enjoyer, but also as a maker, because with Sherlock, what we make in many ways are movies that you become part of yourself. And beyond that, I love working out, so spinning, climbing, both indoors and rooftops. And um, yeah, something we call Apokoi Gym, which is kind of monkey gym. It's kind of a um, high school kind of gym play thing that I do as much as possible because it, it just releases the inner child. So the four founders of Sherlock, we're all from a different industry, right? So Pim's an architect, Mike as a uh, opera singer, Tristan's a trained as a jazz pianist at the conservatory and I was a filmmaker before this. And so we all have these different insights, but all one way or another are working on uh, creating experiences, whether it's a musical experience, a narrative film, or the experience of a space that an architect is responsible for. And we came together kind of excited by the opportunities and the, the possibilities for improvement on escape rooms, where you have a space, a narrative, uh, the hypnotization of music and, and, and being in a world and we thought, well, this is the best circumstances to really touch people in a very deep and exciting way. And I think we made a really good choice aiming that high back then because the first experience that we made, the architect, is still like ranked on top of all the lists here in Amsterdam four years later. And our second one, the sophomore experience called The Vault, is, is, has won awards in the field. Well, Sherlock is in Amsterdam because my co-founders and me live here, and we live here because it's our favorite city in the world. So we've lived everywhere. Um, San Francisco, um, Paris, Berlin, London, Zurich. Okay, so not everywhere, but a couple of places. And what we love, or at least let me tell, speak for myself, what I love about Amsterdam, it's a perfect combination of a metropolis, like a cosmopolis, and a village. So you can be anywhere on this side of the spectrum, you can be anywhere within 10 minutes on the bike, anywhere in the center. Um, you can, you know, there's these many very inspiring companies or very successful companies that for a company like Sherlock are clients. So there's also a lot of fertile ground to do um, entrepreneurial work and there's a big cultural scene, there's a high value on culture and art. So we call ourselves entrepreneurs in that we use our artistic instincts uh, as a commercial means or we, we, uh, we make our living through our art but not in the way that a painter does but by creating products that people didn't expect. Um, and Amsterdam is a perfect place for that. So the, our biggest triumph, I think, is the vault, is where we managed to create a very immersive, very um, elaborate and long experience, combining our best facets of, of, uh, of, of our team. Small spoiler that we also spoil in our marketing material, of course you're going to want um, a maneuver of a laser field in there, which is Wonderful, but it's also not realistic in the sense that a laser field is not something that is actually used as a security measure, but because movies have, have also used this cliche because it's a really cool trope and a good 
it's a good reason to have this kind of exciting Catherine Zeta-Jones maneuvering her way through a maze. That's why they went for the cliché and that's also why we went for that because it's just really cool. And so finding this balance of cliché and surprise, um, yeah, that was a very, a very tough but very rewarding process in the end. And I'm saying tough because we're also four very stubborn people. And I think actually all the projects that we're not too happy about are, are examples of, of projects that we didn't fully went, go into this fight, as it were, and saying, okay, I want to make it better, I want to make it better, let's, let's do this. Yeah, which is tricky because, you know, how much frustration can you take? <laughs> So there's two parts I'm really good at, um, and, and, and they come, and, and there's a big trough in the middle. <laughs> I love uh, combining possibilities to make a new concept. So for instance, um, like thinking of, okay, we have this escape room uh, where you have to break out, now let's make a reverse escape room and make the angle, the PR angle that you, instead of you have to break out, you have to break in. Um, and we'll use these, these ancient vaults. Uh, in Amsterdam uh, to make it like a fully realistic heist experience. I love thinking of interactions and, and thinking of cool challenges, but I, I don't, I've, I've tried and I've never really gotten to the point that I can design a full experience. Or m maybe I haven't forced myself enough because I always get distracted by a more, another high level concept in a different thing. So I'm very good at the, at the beginning of an of, of a experience. And also once it's delivered or almost delivered where I can say, okay, now that we have this, if we do this, this, and this, it will be that plus three. So that, that's what I call awesomeification. The seed for, for doing what I do it was planted by my father. And that's when I was 11, my sister and I, we have this Sinterklaas feast in the Netherlands, which is kind of like Santa Claus, but earlier in December. And he had prepared a mini treasure hunt uh, for us to get the second book of Harry Potter. And of course the first book was already like, had really touched us and we were very excited by this myth of you being special but not knowing it yet, you being a wizard or a magical person. And, and so we were very um, excited by this magical realm, but we'd only read one book because it only, had one, only one had come out. And then the second book came out and my dad had given me a treasure hunt to find this beautiful wizard's hat and my sister one as well and I had a silver one and, and she had a purple one and we had um, cut out holes, um, a series of cut out holes in, in the wizarding hat uh, with intermittently a letter there or a hole. So there was a paper with a letter and then uh, a hole and then a paper with a letter and we didn't really realize what we had to do with that until we noticed that of course you could put these two wizarding hats together and then it spelled the location of where we could find the book which was in the tree hut up uh, up in the tree uh, and so we climbed up and found the second Harry Potter book there and this was the first time I felt this excitement of wow if you create breadcrumbs for people they will tumble into this story and it will be the most exciting thing of their lives. No wait. <laughs> so experiences that really touched me as a maker and, and inspired me. Uh, top of the list are these early childhood experiences that my father made, but The Drowned Man by Punch Drunk and um, Yumi Bum Bum Train in London, it was insane. And um, College of Extraordinary Experiences for sure. And the first time I played in an escape room. Those are the ones that come to mind. Do you know what this is from? It's uh, the mask that you wear at Sleep No More and it discerns the audience members from the actors. And it's the one reason why on this list of qualities that I made for immersive experience design that there's also a bar between you're present or you're a ghost. It's because in Punch Drunk, you're a ghost. So they create this layer, this separation between you and the world, which also makes people a little bit more brave and less inhibited, for better and worse. College of Extraordinary Experiences has helped me in so many ways, uh, even unintentionally and also intentionally. But even just finding that it exists, and I know the comparison with Hogwarts is often made because it is an, a Hogwarts kind of castle and experience, but just finding out that 
a magical school exists that is dedicated to creating magical experiences or extraordinary experiences, that alone, that knowledge and then the picture of the castle and the list of the people coming is like, I'm not alone. We are not alone in this universe. There's other people dedicated to this ideal as well. And yeah, that is like getting the letter from Hagrid. Um, even when you're not yet invited, just knowing that it's there. <laughs> and um, then going there is, is just a whole new step of that energy of like, wow, all these people have their unique forms of creating magic. Some literally creating sleight of hand and this beautiful, well, what did you do, energy? And then the musicians who came on the last night and helped create the graduation ceremony. And then these amazing people from Miao Wolf who have managed to create a very lucrative and sustainable business doing exactly what their hearts tell them. I think it's super inspiring. So yeah, the fact that it is there, the people that come there, and then in third place, the things we do there, but that's really on the third place. The first two are more than enough already to make you feel wow. I'm planning on going back and contributing um, to the run-up of the experience because like I said, the, the discovering of what that it exists and the anticipation of going there is so much magic in there and so much joy. And so we can kind of want to leverage that energy and create even more anticipation. Yeah, that's me. And did you manage to finish your puzzle? No, no, this is uh, very frustrating because it looked so, it looks so nearly done, but nearly done is not nearly done.